Good evening, everybody, and how are we all doing today? This is the Sunday, the 16th of October, 2022. It's a Sunday night live show. What's going on? And one something else I do on a Sunday night, so I got a bit confused there. How are we all doing? doing today hope you are well now in this week's live show i'm talking about seed storage and i want to know how you store your seeds we're also going to be sowing a few seeds live on this stream and checking up on seeds that we've done in the past that's coming up a little bit later on first of all first things let's get the ball rolling and see if anybody is actually out there and straight away yes bally Cillian is good evening everyone good evening to you uh, who else have we got? We've got uh, Adrian is out there. Good evening to you, Adrian. Hope you are well. Uh, who else? Um, Turbo Stream is out there saying good evening, Veg Podcasters. Good evening to you. Uh, do, 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 let's scroll down. Oracle is out there saying comments going missing again. We can see your comments, Oracle. So not quite sure. Um, it might be as Bally Cillian says, are you on live or top messenger settings? Um, not sure what's happening there, Oracle, but we can see your comments, so don't worry. Who else have we got here? We've got Jen's Garden Adventures is out there. Good evening to you. Hope you are well. Lovely to see you. Um, Hargrave Guest has joined us. Evening, everyone. The nights are drawing in. Hope you've had a great week. The nights are certainly drawing in. It's certainly... It's getting dark very early and not next weekend, the weekend after when the clocks go back, it's going to get dark even earlier. I'm not looking forward to that at all. Uh, Anna Jones is out there. Good evening to you. Um, what else have we got? Uh, did, 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 have I missed anybody? My dad is out there. Good evening to you with Margaret as well. Good evening to you. Um anybody else digwell is out there good evening to you i hope you are well um Stuart jackson on facebook is saying evening richard and veg army sorry i am late no problem at all lisa from not just green fingers uk blog is out there as well and chili phil has joined good evening from the chilies lovely to see you um anybody alison o'brien good evening to you hope you are well and richard golden Hello to you. I think that is everybody. A lot of people are trying to help Oracle with his problem with the uh, the comments. Um, I think it might be you're on top comments or top messages. I'm not sure uh, quite what is happening. Anyway, seed storage. This is the subject. I can't remember who it was that came in last week to ask uh, um, uh, uh, who was who, who mentioned something about seed storage but it was a conversation that i thought we could have and it's something i know we've discussed many times before but i'd like to know how you store your seeds this is something that i i spend a lot of time trying to work out and the reason being i think most of us will, will keep seeds in something like this be it a container like this or a just, oh, God, look how messy everything's like. Oh, I'm going to give you the back camera. That, that's too messy at the moment. Um, yeah, many of us will keep our seeds in something like this, something that a bit disorganized, in my opinion, but we throw it and forget it. And this, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just not good enough for me. Now, before I went live, what I usually do is I set myself up, get everything ready to go live, and then uh, do bits indoors. And then just before I'm ready to go live, I come back out here and hit the go live button. And what happened in that time between setting everything up and going inside and, so and get, making myself a cuppa and everything, I came out here and I found that this container had fallen over and all these seeds were all over the floor. And that was something that I had to really very quickly throw back into this pot to get ready for the show. That, for me, is one of the reasons that I do not like or not keen on this sort of this storage system. So over to you guys. We'll get back to my storage system in just a moment. But over to you guys. How do you store your seeds? Digwell is saying it's always dark here. Moo ha 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 ha. Halloween in two weeks' time. Halloween in two weeks' time. I've got a few things worked out. 
for Halloween. <coughs> Steve, um, oh, Steve Tysos, this is. Good evening. Managed to be around for the live show for once. Steve, I've got to come over and see you very soon, actually. Uh, lovely to see you. Sean O'Brien has joined. Good evening, all. Good evening to you. Brian's Garden and Polly Tunnel has joined. Good evening to you. Uh, Beatrice has joined. Good evening, everyone. Good evening to you. Uh, any, any, what else have we got? Muddy Boots has joined. Good evening to you, buddy. Hope you are well. Um, I think uh, Turbo Stream. So Turbo Stream is hitting this storage, seed storage question off. I still saw mine in cardboard washing tablet boxes in the kitchen cupboards. I will one day organise myself. If it works for you, then there's nothing wrong with it. And I quite like the idea, actually, of cardboard tablet boxes because they're just the right size to get some packets in. And uh, organisation for me is what it's all about at the moment. Uh, Idaho Garn Girl has joined. Good evening to you. She sent hello to a great number of people. Um, I think that is it. So, yes, seed storage is what we're talking about today. I'm just going to have a swig of this cup of coffee. Uh, Alison O'Brien is saying, oh, sorry, just missed it. I'm not keen on Halloween. I'm with you, but it is an event and we've got to make it jo jovial, make it a bit of fun is the way I look at it. It's just, I, I know what you're saying though. I know what exactly what you are saying, um, but I'm always fascinated with the origins of Halloween as opposed to what it's become. Uh, Muddy Boots, store mine like many others in a craft case with 16 small cases that store inside. Now, it's funny you mention that, Muddy Boots, because when we talked about this before, uh, this did come up at that time. Got to make a bit of room here. Um, so I did go out and I bought one of these craft storage boxes. I'm going to have to. Let me see if I can just tie, make things look a little bit tidier on the overhead camera so I can show you what's actually going on. That looks a bit better. So, no, it doesn't. There we go. That'll do. So this is what Muddy Boots is talking about, and this is what part of the idea was all about. And I like these. I've got to say, yes, they are plastic, but I like this... Uh, this storage system it's nice and organized you've got 12 compartments in here at the moment i'm using this one for herbs and i'm trying to do it alphabetically in, in theory easier said than done basil in one uh we've got golden fever few in another one um parsley some weird noises going on here today uh what else have we got time so on so on so I like this. I do like this idea quite a lot. And it fits nicely uh, to, to store away, protects, um, protects everything. If the seeds and mice can't get into it or rodents can't get into it. I like this a lot. I like this a lot. Bit of money had to be spent on the box, but I think it is worth it for being nicely organized. And I do believe in being nicely organized. Um, I should say, I'm just going to quickly bring the banners up. If you want to call in, the phone line is open 07307 135 174. I'm going to quickly grab my ears as well so I can, if we do get any phone calls, I'm, I'm ready for it. I know we've had trouble with a phone lately. I'm not sure why. I'm looking at changing the phone soon. So hopefully that'll improve things. Uh, where were we with the comments? So Ernie is out there. Evening, Richard. Watching from East Kirkby in Lincolnshire. What are you doing all the way up there from where you are normally? You're normally down in Dorset. That's pretty much opposite end of the country, if I remember correctly. Um, oh, I've got my ears on wrong. Jen says, I store mine in an old shoebox and tin. Yeah, that works. Tins, the old chocolate tins, I always think are great as well. Again, being metal, right, rats and mice can't really chew through it very easily. So it's going to help just keep those from uh, uh, getting at your seeds and, and destroying them. Uh, Hargrave Gas, my seeds are stored in those plastic celebration sweet boxes we get at Christmas. Nice and cheap and well, good recycling at the end of the day, isn't it? Um, 
again, I think that's a great good idea. If it works for you, it works. Um, yeah, yeah, um, a bit like Jen's with a shoebox and tin, it all works. Bally Sillian says, I think you checked it up before. I store mine in a photographer's case containing individual smaller plastic boxes. I think Bally Sillian, you were the one that mentioned this before as well. Um, yeah, I, I think we did look into that as well. Very similar to that case that I just showed you. Uh, again, it's all about being organized for me. And that's what I like about these cases. Steve says, I saw store mine in a similar box in alphabetic order. It tends to get slightly unsorted throughout the year, so end up resorting. Funny enough, yes, I'm I'm going to be resorting through all my seeds this week. Uh, oh, um, Monty Boots is saying hi, guys. Good evening. <laughs> Uh, Toby Stream, I spent this morning reorganizing the shed, put up a new shelf and moved another shelf. I can now sit in my chair inside without hitting the head on the old shelf. Yeah, I'm, I'm a big lover of having <laughs> tidy, organized sheds. You wouldn't believe it looking at this one at the moment, but tidy, organized sheds make all the difference. I think every man and his dog has one of those craft photo boxes for seeds. I only got one because of you guys, to be honest. My other system that I will show you a little bit later on um, is my preferred way, but I'll, I'll show you that a little bit later on. But and I want to find out what you do from here. Not just green fingers. I am so ridiculously organized with my seeds. Good. I like it. <laughs> I have three tins that I keep in my allotment cupboard in our kitchen diner. Each tin is organized into brassicas, onions, roots, legumes, salads, herbs, and others, green manures, flowers, etc. I also have a spreadsheet that I use, which all my seeds are listed down on. So I know exactly what seeds I'm short of, and I can buy them at the end of the summer when the sales come along and make big discounts. I like that. I don't quite do the. Um, the spreadsheet because I, I find I don't do get on well with spreadsheets if I'm honest I struggle with them but yes I've got different containers that I would keep vegetable seeds in flower seeds which is a very small container because I don't really grow flowers but I will try and keep those in it's something different green manures and herbs are all kept in different boxes as well that photo box as I just showed you is my uh, box for herbs I used to keep the photo storage boxes, but stopped as I had too many packets of seeds to fit in the little boxes. I now have plastic shoe boxes and store seeds alphabetically with separate box for flower seeds, stuff and vegetables. Um, but yeah, uh, those plastic, I used to use those plastic shoe boxes as well, funny enough. And they are, they were quite cheap if I remember. I got them from Poundland at the time. So they were cost me a pound. But that's when Poundland charged a pound, of course, for all their items. But um, the reason, why did I stop using them? There was a reason behind I didn't use them. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, not sure how much you paid, Richard, but now they are about £24 on Amazon. I think I paid £12 for mine, if I remember, from Hobbycraft. That's where I got mine from. Um, it was only I was in there for something else and I saw them and I grabbed them. Um, I haven't looked on Amazon, but that does, £24 does sound about right from what I've seen. Uh, Tara Noon, lovely to see you. Thanks for coming along. I store mine in an old army ammunition box. Love it. Absolutely love it. I'd love to see a photo of that. Um, ammunition boxes for me are such a, 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 again, because they're made of metal, nothing's going to get inside and destroy and eat your seeds and everything inside there. So definitely a good one, the ammunition boxes. Um, I like that, like that a lot. Um, Turbo Stream, I have a few seed packets in the allotment shed. They're in a plastic takeaway box to protect them. Again, plastic. I mean, plastic isn't as good as metal for protecting against rodents, but... The nice cheap material uh, takeaway boxes. Obviously, you've had a takeaway; it's free. They, they're a, a, an extra bonus, aren't they, to the takeaway? Um, but yeah, if it works for you, it works. 
Uh, Idaho says, I used a photo organizer box, but too many seeds. So I did some plastic food storage container with snap-on lids to keep them dry. I label boxes according to what they are. Also use a spreadsheet. I'm useless. I've said this earlier. Useless with spreadsheets. I'll be completely honest. I'm, um, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm not a very IT literate person. I, I And I struggle with spreadsheets. I mean, this is part of the trouble of being organized i think these days spreadsheets are seem to be the way forward and it makes a lot of sense i'm just useless with them and i've never found a system that i have found that works for me to keep my spreadsheets up to date up to date is the word i am looking for uh turbo stream says at home the seeds are sorted by the top right crop by the crop i.e. brassica, onion, legume, etc., etc. I think a lot of people are doing this, and I like that. And Digwa says, no rodents in my house. I don't keep seeds on the plot. And that is a, a very good point, actually. You know, um, rodents can be a bit of a problem when it comes to seed storage. So, again, this is why I'm a big fan of the, the, the containers to make it a little bit harder for them to access our seeds but what unfortunately you won't see this on camera but just down here i've got an old fridge and this old fridge is an industrial fridge so it, it, it actually works it, there's nothing wrong with it it's not plugged in it's a little bit noisy to have indoors um but i actually then put all these boxes and everything like that inside this fridge and an old fridge would do just as well the reason i use a fridge is it helps keep that temperature around your seeds a little bit more constant so it can be really cold outside and because the fridge is insulated it's not so cold on the inside so those seeds aren't going to struggle with the temperature variation causing damage to them but also rodents and mice and rats etc etc can't get in there it keeps the seeds dry and what i also do you know when you buy electrical items and you get those little packets of silica gel it always says do not eat on them i throw those in the boxes as well and inside the fridge just to try and keep off some of that humidity to make a bit of a more drier environment to store the seeds and again i find that this works very well i do have far 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 too many seeds i've got to go through them this week and make a culling of what i don't need but also the advantage with this or um i forgot my train of thought the other advantage with having them in here is that the the drawers the the, the shelves can slide out for easy access so yeah, I've uh, built in a fridge. When I built this shed, this fridge was quite a key point at maintaining the seeds. So what's everyone else saying on the chat? Brian's Garden and Polytunnel. I always check my packets of seeds at this time of year. I can discard any out of date if I have too many and decide what to order for next year. Most are in crafters box until I need them. Funny enough, that's what I'm going to be have to do this week is go through my seeds and get rid of any that are... Out of date. I tend to use my out of date seeds then uh, to create uh, micro seedlings, micro seeds or microgreens um, until they have all used up just to use them up quickly. Don't like wasting this house. Old out of date seeds can still be viable. They're just not going to be as good. Uh, Steve says all seeds stored indoors at home in a house. I wouldn't trust it in a shed, rodents and damp, etc, etc. And that, I agree totally agree uh, my wife got annoyed with me having all these seeds indoors so I, I moved them out to this fridge which just helps uh, prevent all these problems turbo stream i did have a few signs of rodents in the plot shed but after i repaired it no more nibbles you'll be amazed how little room rodents need to get through into these things Ballycillian, I don't like keeping seeds at the plot because of temper variations. That's why I like the craft box. Easy to bring all the seeds with me from home. And it's a good point. That's a very good point, actually. Yeah, because, you know, I've just picked this up and they've all fallen out. <laughs> I was going to show you how easy it was to pick them up and then that's gone and happened. 
luckily they are still in their they're still in their little boxes. They're just a wave of floor. This is one of those days where everything falls over. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Digwell says no risk of theft of the seeds at home either. Could still happen. Somebody could break into your garden, but it's like, I know what you mean. It's less likely to happen. Uh, Stuart says my seeds are kept in an old biscuit tin or even three. Yes. Right. So we're back to the biscuit tins, the metal tins. Biscuits don't seem to come into them. Remember when even chocolates at Christmas used to come in the metal tins. Now they are all plastic. And I'm on the I'm on the fence with plastic. I know plastic can be a bit of a dirty word. Some people in the garden community really don't like the use of plastic. But personally, I think plastic is a, a good material if it's used in the right way. And if we use it several times over, I don't see a problem with it. Idaho, I kept I keep all my little plastic boxes of seeds in my closet in my house. Temperature stays fairly constant there. Um yeah, I mean, my I've got to admit, my wardrobe is completely full at the moment. I've only got the one wardrobe. I've got the largest wardrobe. Amanda's got a wardrobe, several chest of drawers, uh, cupboards, and et cetera, et cetera, for work clothes. I've only got the one, and it's pretty full of my stuff. So seeds were something I wasn't allowed indoors. Adrian says to Digwell, I hope you mean theft by rodents. Well, I think rodents can't be a, that problem. Oh, sorry, theft by rodents can be a bit of a problem for Digwell, but I also think he means the two-legged variety of rodents, shall we call them, that have a tendency to break into people's sheds. <sighs> annoyance, annoyance. <laughs> Turbo Stream says, good job they were in boxes. <laughs> um, if you saw it down here, you would you would believe it. I'm, uh, I'm a bit afraid to move the, the mobile camera at the moment in case it pulls something out. Um, <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Can't be live TV. Thank you very much. I, annoyingly, these when these things happen. Uh, Digwell is laughing as well. So, yeah. I copied some of the spreadsheet ideas Steve at Seaside Allotment uses. All of them categories that he uses didn't really work for me, but I saw the value of listing them and recording growth info. Um, now, I know Steve comes from a background of business, so he's very used very used to using spreadsheets i as i said earlier i really struggle with using spreadsheets and what i really perhaps that's what we could do with a live show in the, the future perhaps somebody who's very good with spreadsheets can come on the live show with me and show me how to create some spreadsheets to track this sort of thing and how to keep it updated i don't have a clue with spreadsheets i'll be completely honest they they baffle me i know there's lots of fancy tricks um but Steve, I know he came, he has a background in business from conversations I've had with him. So he's very used to spreadsheets. But and I see the value of recording it. It's just the actual recording take for me is what I throws me out. The seed tins came out of my dad's shed. I do keep them, keep them in month order. I try to keep them tidy, but not always successful. Now I know that feeling. I completely know that feeling. It's as I said, I try and keep them tidy, but you end up with these these boxes especially when you keep getting scent seeds and uh, the seeds just build up and build up i'm trying not to buy any seeds at the moment as well apart from the seeds from the supporters but yeah digwell says plastic is not the criminal it's the users that are guilty of misuse i totally excuse me totally agree with that yeah i totally agree with that it's the throwing away of plastic um Although the, what was they called, the microbeads, the microplastics that they used to put in soap and things, they were also a bit criminal as well. Idaho says, every time I go to thrift shops and second-hand shops, I look at the tins. I look for ones that would be useful in pantry storage or steed storage. I do pretty much do the same. Um, I'm just, I, I, I've come up with, I'll show you my idea or my system in a little moment as well. What well, I've got to clear all these out of the way to get to it now. Um, Adrian says, oh, I was hoping it also wasn't family members. I, oh, I think I can't remember what that was. Money Boots, I did a video of creating a simple spreadsheet for tracking seeds. I think I watched that. Was that a couple of years ago now? I think I did watch that video uh, at the time. And it, it, it did 
give me a, a bit of inspiration to go and give spreadsheets a try. Again, my problem is just not being able to keep track of things. Um, as I said, I'm just useless with spreadsheets. I thought we did that spreadsheet thing before. I can't. I think we may have tried. We may have tried. I'm just no good at it. I'm not sure. Digwell is the king of spreadsheets as Turbo Stream. Yeah. And Nicholas says, hi, Richard and all. I'm tuned in, but watching on TV as phone on charge as battery was out earlier. No problem. Um, what's it like on the big screen? I hope the picture's coming through nice and crisp and clear. Uh, the screen I have here, I know it's in 720, so it may not work great on the big screen, but this, the picture here looks pretty crisp today. Idaho says, yeah, I'm a dinosaur. I never had a computer class. Whatever I learned, it was through troll and error, and I'd admit. I have people who created spreadsheets for me to use. Now at retirement, I am learning. My trouble as well. Um, I know you can do a lot of fancy things with spreadsheets. I'm just no good at keeping... My problem, I'll be honest, my problem is keeping them running and keeping them updated. Money Boots' video was nine months ago, hashtag... 266. I think you've done one a couple of years ago as well. I think, or you may have mentioned it in a video, but I do remember your 266 as well. That was the long, long 45 minute version, wasn't it? If I remember correctly, let me know. By the way, uh, the phone line is open if anybody does want to call in. The phone, the number is on the screen above, as you can see 07307 135. 174. But if you also want to zap in, the link is going up in the uh, the comments right now. Now, Steve says, just make sure you run this spreadsheet and the spreadsheet does not run you. I think that's the trouble. Yeah, I think running this spreadsheet is where I go wrong. I'm a bit, as I said, I'm never very good at IT. So for me, this is all a bit. <laughs> Steve probably knows a lot more how poor I am with IT than anybody else. Um, right. Now, something I have been asking from you guys uh, is if you would be good enough to send in a video, as as we're calling it, a get to know you video. Um, and this is our chance to find out the people behind the names on this live show. We've said that we're a community of gardeners here. Um I've had one sent in so far, and that is what I'm going to play now. And it comes from the one, the only, Mr. Digwell. All right, guys, how's it going? Just about to start uh, dehydrating some tomatoes to make sun-dried tomatoes. But I thought, first of all, I'll do the um, let's get to know you video. And you'll probably wish you hadn't asked. Well, here we go then, guys. You've seen me behind the camera and you've seen the plots, but this is a little bit about me. I've lived in the, the Cam, the Dursley area of Gloucestershire, all of my life, well, all my memorable life, since four years old. Uh, Dad was a linotype operator for the uh, local newspaper in Salisbury, and he got headhunted, so we moved to Dursley. Lovely area, southern edge of the Cotswolds. I live just by Stinchcombe Hill, which is the most westerly part of the Cotswold, and to tell you the truth, I wouldn't live anywhere else. I left school at 16 to join the Royal Navy as an artificer apprentice. Uh, during the ninth term as an apprentice, I got so seasick on a ship, because that was our our sea term, that I volunteered to become a submariner. And I became a submariner, and I uh, qualified, and I served on the nuclear submarine HMS Valiant. I joined as an apprentice, and I left five years later as a chief petty officer, uh, because I had asthma, and you can't have asthma on a submarine, but we may have seen that um, that video. So I went back to being seasick on surface ships. I decided to take the nuclear welder course, the high duty pipe welder course, six months of intensive welding, so that I could repair nuclear reactors. I wanted to stay in touch with the submarine people I knew. Great camaraderie, great esprit de corps and all that. Anyway, I qualified, got another uh, city and guilds uh, with distinction um, to add to my list. <laughs> the rest of the list, well, air conditioning, diesels, electricity generation, gas turbines, technical author, oh, and so and so. I think my proudest moment in the Navy was getting a citation from Captain Tim Lawrence, Princess Anne's husband. He's an admiral now. I, uh, basically, I did a repair to a fridge that had never been done before. And the citation reads something like, House's ad hoc repairs kept the ship on station in the Caribbean despite lack of support from the base units. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I did five six-month trips to the Caribbean and two six-month trips to the Falkland Islands. Now, the problem is uh, two of those six-month trips were within a few months of each other. And that was probably what it was. It was a major factor in my divorce. Uh, we divorced happily, very happily, remained good friends until she passed away seven years ago, sadly. Uh, great friends. Um, I've got three kids from the marriage, uh, Carla, Briney and Kyle. And she had three kids from her uh, her second marriage. Now, she's passed away. I'm like a pseudo-dad to the other three, so it's great. We're a very, very, very close family, all of us. Um, well, so yeah, i got six grandkids. <laughs> um, a seventh one due in uh, middle November, actually. Oh, God. That's more presents to buy at Christmas, isn't it? Anyway, I left the mob at 40 years old. And I spent, I think it was three years at Thames Water. And it's called Thames Water Provinces. It's not Thames Water in London, as you'd expect. It's right out up by Swindon and uh, Sirencester, and even further north, up to Stow on the Wold. And I worked mostly in the the middle region, which, strangely enough, included Ashton Keynes, where Stuart is, and uh, with and Stuart's school. And here's a quick map of um, where I was and where his school is. So close. So I left Thames Water after about three years, and I moved to Essilor down in Thornbury, um, a spectacle lens manufacturer. I started off as a shift technician, then a supervisory technician, and I became the maintenance manager all within the space of a year. And I stayed here for 20 years. Absolutely loved it there. Did a lot of travelling abroad. Met, met, made some very good friends and met some very interesting people, I'll tell you. I took voluntary redundancy in 2020 after the furlough, and I've been happy ever since. Very happy. <laughs> oh, dear. I did ask my boss if I could go back to work for a rest, but he wasn't having any of it. <laughs> oh. I've always liked gardening. Um, I had a garden when I was married because uh, my ex used to look after it. But once I got divorced, we couldn't really maintain a garden. So I put a, a pond in the back garden and I ended up with a koi pond. And I love my koi. But the trouble is, tragedy struck one really hot summer, sultry, thundery evening. There was a long power cut for about eight hours. I didn't even know about it till I woke up. And um, the pump went off, the um, the venturi that fed the pond with air went off, the air pump went off, and basically they all died from suffocation, lack of oxygen. Three and a half thousand pounds worth of fish. So anyway, I was gutted, wasn't going to go through this again, so I switched the garden back to being a garden. And it blossomed, and uh, I started growing a few veg, and then the containers appeared on the front driveway, and I was hooked back onto vegetables, back into gardening. I wanted more. So I applied for an allotment, thinking there'd be a long wait, because everyone told me you'd be waiting for years for an allotment. And three weeks later, I had a plot. The trouble is, the plot was unworked for eight years, and it was on the site of an old quarry. Now, not the quarry you think of today with mechanised machinery, but one of these uh, medieval quarries, you know, just a little bit of Cotswold stone here and there. And four inches below the soil, you couldn't even put a fork through. It was just inch two inch three inch stones all the way so straight away and without knowing what i was doing i became no dig i had raised beds and you don't dig raised beds so um there we are that was me starting off with no dig i grew so much in the first year i gave so much away the girl is at work said we don't want any more courgettes stop and we've had enough of your smoothies and so on so i started giving away to a food bank but uh, that's all changed now that's another story I don't know how I got into showing veg, but I think my daughter showed me a poster about a local village show. So I entered and got a few prize cards. And there I was, hooked again. <laughs> so I joined the uh, the gardening club and uh, I've been exhibited ever since. And not content with um, showing veg, I started growing and showing daffodils for the spring show and then cooking. I was the first man to win the trophy for the most points in the cooking classes in the club's 75 year history. And I've won it ever since. <laughs> Uh, I do like my food. Um, I desperately needed more growing space. Uh, my front drive was getting so crowded. I used to be able to get four cars on my front drive, but I could only get one on. So uh, I thought, what am I going to do here? And then again, my daughter, Bryony, told me about um, a new garden centre that was opening called Leaf and Ground, and they were going to have private allotments. Straight away on the email I applied... Um, that was January 19. Loads of chats and meetings with the owner and about my plans for a little no-dig bed. And things moved a bit slowly, getting getting the site ready, preparing it. And I'll tell you what, what a site it is. Even the water butts are made of Cotswold stone, you know, it's really good. 
Um, Covid hit, um, twiddling my thumbs, and then all of a sudden in May the plots were ready, May 2020, and I took over and been going up, been going for two and a half years now, basically. My goal now is to grow the veg I like and stop growing the veg just for the sake of it. A few years ago I took a distant learning course in horticulture and I now have a few diploma letters after my name, if I want to use them, you know, very pretentious. My plans for the future? Well, I want to consolidate the, the space on both of my plots. I want to join beds together, lose the little footpaths in between, and being no dig, the compost can stand walking on. Not trampled, but walking on, you know. Uh, I want to learn more about how everything interacts together in nature, and I'm trying to garden in nature's favour. I'm into fungi and the mycelium and the mycorrhizals. Companion planting is a big part of my uh, the way I do things. And I want to start to learn how to live with pests. I mean, let's face it, not all slugs are bad. And yet slug prevention methods kill all slugs. I would give good money for a bunch of leopard slugs to eat the rest, you know. Yeah, I've got a small wildlife pond going in on the leaf and ground plot over the winter. Next couple of months. Looking forward to doing that. Attracting a few more toads and frogs and newts. There's plenty around because everyone around me has got a little pond, but uh, I'd like me own, you know. And then, of course, there's my cooking. You may have noticed I like cooking. <laughs> um, I love trying new recipes, new ideas, and I like experimenting. Like with my green tomato cake. Who would have thought that would have worked, eh? Well, I think that's about me, guys. I've uh, taken up enough of your time, so um, let's hear from somebody else next week, eh? Take care, guys, and may the force be with you. Fantastic. Thank you so much. There we go. We all know about Digwell's uh, Get to Know You video. We all know about Digwell now. What a brilliant, brilliant video again. Now, anybody wants, anybody else wants to send in a video, don't think you have to put quite as much effort as what Digwell did. That was a, a very high, um, high effort video. But uh, as, as long as we can get to know you, I do ask that you film it in landscape and ideally 720 if you can, but that's not not essential. It just makes my life a little bit easier. And just head to wetransfer.com and send it to richard at thevegegrowerpodcast.co.uk. Uh, and don't forget, at this point, I'm just going to ask everybody, show some love for that video, show some love for this live stream, hit that like button, hit that thumbs up button. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to click the notification to know when we go live. Now, I did see, where was it? Uh, from Idaho. She said, I sent in a video last week. I don't think I got it, uh, unfortunately, Idaho. So if you could send it again, I'd be most grateful if you still have it. I'm very sorry I didn't get it at all. I don't think I even saw it. So apologies for that. Uh, Andrew Norris has joined. Hey, all. Sorry I'm late. Lovely to see you, Andrew. Hope you are well. Uh, we are talking about seed storage and how you store your seeds. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, I do keep a book of what seeds I have also when I sow and first frost, etc, etc. Um, yeah, again, I've tried books, but I end up with so many little notebooks. I'm, I'm very particular. I have to have a notebook for everything. So I end up with all these notebooks that end up just getting lost and uh, or not around when I need them, I should say. And when I do get hot or I'm with them, I end up to forget and to update things. Bally Sealy says, my main trouble with storing seeds used to be uh, more packets of seeds than I was going to get so, but now the spreadsheet keeps me under control and I only buy what I need. Fantastic. Um, that, again, everyone's singing the praises for the spreadsheets tonight. So I'm, I'm again intrigued on these spreadsheets. I just need to get some, I'm, I'm going to, we're going to have to do a trading video where somebody comes on into this live show and shows me how to set up a um, a spreadsheet for this. Hargrave Gus, I've done a Get to Know You video, but forgot to send it. We'll do it tomorrow. I'll look forward to that. That would be absolutely fantastic. Thank you. Um, and he goes on to say, my video won't be anywhere near in as interesting as that one. I'm sure it will be. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fantastic. Um well, what a history, Digwell. I love it. What a history. Absolutely. This is, why I want, this is what I want to find out or why I feel we need to get to know you. We are a community in this live show. And if we can get to know each other, it's going to be great to 
to build that community. Money Boots says, a marvellous and jam-packed life story, Steve. Even Andrew certainly would have had you on his programme. Indeed, indeed. Beatrice has also shown some love for that video. Fantastic. Jen's Garden, fan fascinating, Steve. What a interesting life you leave. Uh, Tabo Stream says, what an interesting break that Digwell is. Amazing backstory. Uh, Alison O'Brien is a thumbs up, indeed. Uh, a great video. We are only about 20 miles away. We must all meet up. Um, Idaho says she's going to send her one in again. That would be great indeed. Um, I'll come back to that. Yeah, as I said, what a great video. I was very interested, of course, to hear about your refrigeration experience, being a fridge engineer by day. So that, that particularly, but also your gardening experience was also very, very interesting. And I love the way, Digwell, you started off with no dig. Digwell says, I always update my spreadsheet as soon as I get home from the plot. Otherwise, it is useless. Yeah. I mean, that's what I always aim to do. The trouble is I get home from my plot. The wife wants something. I've got to upload all my uh, stuff, from my cameras and my audio equipment onto the computer. Um, it just adds more problems than what it, it seems to solve. Um it's a it's a bit of a bit of a, this is my problem with spreadsheets it's just and i'm not good with them so yeah uh stuart jackson says i would like to thank everyone for the rhubarb advice this week he asked in the facebook group about when is the right time to cut down rhubarb so uh, uh a lot of people helped with that but we have got somebody on who has zapped in it is the one and only mr andrew norris how are you doing my friend I'm doing very well, thank you. Nice, nice to see you. Nice to. Sorry, I'm late, but um, uh, I've when I'm not working, I forget what day of the week it is, and I've just had uh, a hornet fly into the kitchen. Uh, I have a hornet's nest outside in the um, in an apple tree in front of the house, so I had to get rid of it. Otherwise, I would have joined in a little bit earlier. No, no problem. It's lovely to see you anyway. How's things in Croatia? Well, they're good. I, I just kind of put the, the the garden to the vegetable garden to bed now. I dug up pretty much the last uh, vegetables, which was carrots and a few parsnips. You may remember I'm having trouble growing parsnips. Yes. And uh, I, I had a few few this year, and we have installed this uh, drop by drop watering system. So that um, where the drops land and, you know, throughout the summer, which is uh, pretty hot here. Um, uh, I think the problem with the parsnips in the past was that the, the ground forms a crust yeah. on top because of the heat. And the seeds take a little while, about 28 days to germinate, by which time there's a crust formed and the seeds cannot penetrate through that. Yeah. But I think with this uh, drop by drop system, yeah. um, it should hopefully solve that problem. But I, I dug up my parsnips yesterday and I, I took the best one and I've just eaten it for my supper. <laughs> oh, lovely. How did it taste? It was fantastic, really. <laughs> it's vegetable widely known here. So I, I, I like to grow it. And I, if I can grow, you know, in great numbers, then I like to distribute it around to people in the village here. Fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. So we're talking about seed storage tonight. How do you store your seeds? Well, I have to be honest. Uh, I don't store them because every neighbourhood in, in Zagreb, every quarter, has its own green market. We're, we're very fortunate in, in that respect. And, uh, you know, around March, April, you, you get the... Um, uh, the uh, seed producers, the growers who who produce, you know, baby plants. So I, I tend to buy, you know, fresh tomato plants, fresh courgettes, fresh uh, peppers uh, and, and cucumbers. And then just there is only, you know, a few pence each. So it makes sense to get get them when they've already been started by other people. And then I buy them and uh, bring them into my garden. Oh, okay. Okay. That's an interesting, interesting way of doing it. I, I hear 
a lot of people do that more and more. The price of the plug plants are so cheap these days. Uh, plant, that's the word, yeah. Yeah, I know, I know. And, you know, it's, it's good to give business to yeah. such people. Yeah. Yeah, indeed. But the garden indeed. here has been fairly successful. Um, peppers, the, the soil here is not quite good, not really good for peppers, but for courgettes and squash, it's, it's really fantastic. And tomatoes, we had three different types of tomato and each one produced you know a pretty good crop which we've made into a tomato sauce and storing now in our basement store here um carrots as i said not not so not not too bad parsnips not that good um and i grew nasturtiums for the first time this year just just to yeah. eat the flour you know that lovely peppery flavor um, yes, it's my first time this year, so I'm very pleased with that. And squash, we had a good crop of squash, and butternut squash and ginger soup. I, I recommend it to everybody. It's the most wonderful, wonderful soup you could possibly have. You look surprised. <laughs> Interesting. I'm looking for butternut squash recipes at the moment. Well, I'm looking for butternut squash recipes at the moment because I've got a lot of butternut squash that are nearly ready. So. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm looking, uh, could you send me that recipe when you have a chance? Well, uh, it's just kind of invented, you know, cut up oh, the butternut yeah. squash, cook it and chop up a good quantity of ginger. Okay, according to taste, you can always add a little bit more garlic and one potato and cook it all up, mix it up with a um, mixer stick. And it really is fantastic. Yeah. But uh, if you like, I'll write it. Sounds I'll write nice easy. Um, I think it is crazy. Yeah, yeah, no, that would that would be great. That would be great. Yeah, I but think your signal's like, starting to go now. It's just yeah, starting yeah. to buffer quite a bit. I'm on on the my phone, not on on um int not on I'm on Wi-Fi, not yeah. uh, regular internet. But I I liked Digwell's video and especially his daffodils. I have a collection of about 18 different, 18, 20 different types of daffodil here. One of my favorite flowers. And I've been collecting them over the years and adding to my collection each each year. I added one or two more new varieties. But Digwell's video was wonderful. Yeah. It's a good idea that people make videos about yeah. a little bit about their background. Well, that's what we want to find out. So we expect one from you as well at some point, Andrew. <laughs> okay, I've probably told you everything you need to know. But uh, yeah, I can do one for you. Sure. Yeah. Okay. I'll show you my little piece of land. No, here. Everyone's welcome. We want to hear it from everyone. Yeah. All right, Richard. Yeah, well, that would be lovely. Lovely, lovely to chat. Yeah. And I'm so pleased that I caught your your show before, you know, a little bit late, but I, I came in. And, uh, you know, I love to watch it each week. When yeah. I get to but it's lovely to see you as well, Andrew. See there? Has he gone? Is the signal gone? Oh, he... Yeah. All right. Catch you later. I... Greetings to everyone. Yep. I'm going. I'm going. I'm off. Bye, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Ciao, Richard. Bye. Bye. You take care. Cheers. Bye. Cheers. Bye. There we go. All the way from Croatia. That that anybody wants to zap in and use that, it is. I'll add the link in the comment as well. Um, just that's a nice dimension to this show when people do that, I've got to say. So uh, where were we with the comments? Uh, Bally Cillian says, I'm the same, Rich, with no books, but heard a great tip last week was to get a five-year diary, so only one book every five years. Yeah, um, yeah, that that makes sense actually. Again, I'm just I'm I'm useless with notebooks. I've actually got myself this what smart I called a smart notebook, and it's basically you use an erasable pen, and so it's the only book I then have to carry around with me, and I can wipe it off and basically take a picture of each page to store on this server that I it, how it works, and it's working quite nicely for me. I've got to say, but it's not easy. Money Boots says, I keep an A5 notebook as a daily diary with any notes allotment related. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. It's, again, it's just um, 
again, I, I like the audio. This is what I do with the audio, I guess you could say. Uh, convenient, and I generally always take my my equipment with me, so it, it's easy for that. But yeah, A5 notebook as a, a daily diary. Margaret, we love that video. You have a real talent and your voice is so encouraging and gentle and funny. What a great life you've had so far. Thank you. That was to dig well with his video. Indeed it was. Uh, Idaho says, RE spreadsheet. I had to figure out the information that I wanted or would be helpful to me. It is sometimes hard to envision what info would be useful. As I mentioned, I had to try out Seaside, Steve from Seaside's life. Um, indeed, yeah, I, I mean... I'd probably make things too complicated because I want to store everything down, which is always a problem of mine. But uh, yeah, uh, I'm looking, looking, I've got to get into spreadsheets. Brian's gun. I grow my own plants from seed is part of the pleasure of gardening. Uh, yeah, I mean, I do like growing mine from seed, but there are times that a bit more help, um, especially if you're looking for seeds or plants that you don't normally grow or don't have the seeds for. Uh, Digwell says, I buy loads of plug plant veggies every year. Not much in it in money wise when you only need a dozen plants. I agree. Yeah, no, I do agree. It, plug plants are so cheap and you still get to grow them on. In fact, I always recommend to the first time gardener not to bother growing anything from seed, but buy plug plants and grow those because it just adds just makes it a little bit easier and more successful in that first year and then you can think about sowing seeds in this in your second year Stuart jackson says we have about 16 butternut squash at school so maybe i will send out the recipe with them yeah i've got so many butternut squashes it's absolutely delicious um always always after butternut squash recipes now Digwell says, totally great, agree with nasturtium flowers. Superb peppery taste. Still have loads of flour in here. Yeah, indeed, I agree with that as well. Um, anybody else? Digwell says, PM me, Andrew, RE, the daffodils. Um, indeed. And Tara Noon has said, I've got a five-year diary. Bought it last year, never used it. It has a really good plan at the front, but then it just has plant profiles, which I don't find very helpful. I grow too many for that. Um, I, yeah, I mean, I, I like this. I, I like this idea of the five-year diary. Again, I don't know where, I've never seen one, so I have to look into it. But it I get what you're saying. If it's plant profiles, again, I think we did this earlier this year. I wanted to design our own like garden planner book. And I did sort of say it needs to be customizable to everybody's needs. I don't think there's one one option for everybody uh, that really hits it down on the bottom. Uncle is asking if the phone is on. It is on. It is on. Um Oh seven three oh seven one three five one seven four. But I know uh, a few people have said when they've tried calling in, it's not ringing on this end. So I'm not sure what's going on with that phone. Bally said, as well as notes, I like to take photos when things are going wrong. You can look at old photos and see how far you've come, which gives you a lift. Yeah, I always say that. Um, I always say taking photos or videos. And going back, when you're feeling a bit down, a bit like you're not quite where you should be, if you always go back to what you started with, it always helps just motivate you. Turbo Stream says, I should probably buy plug plants, but not all my seeds make it, but most do. Whatever works for whoever's involved, you know, no problem with that. Turbo Stream, I take photos most visits to the plot as a picture journal to look back on as the year progresses. Yeah, I mean, I I, I pretty much always take a camera with me wherever I go. Um, I'm actually, before I came on this live show, I dropped my camera and broke the lens um, on one of my cameras. I've got four or five cameras now. Um, but a bit annoyed that I've broken a lens, to say the least. Luckily, because all my cameras work on the same lenses, it's not too much of a problem, but I'm a bit annoyed with that. Digwell says, I will be expanding my spreadsheet next year to include the weather per day and brand of compost used for planting. Even the NFU was upset by the government peak decision, so I need to keep record of the rubbish I use. 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm all for testing all these different composts, etc. And I think keeping records is a good way to do it. I'm looking, what I really want to get, and if I can find one, is a, a weather station that will automatically update my computer with all the the relevant weather details as it goes along. I've got to find something. I know it exists. I've just got to find one. Uh, I use a small notebook to record garden info, sometimes notes from YouTube videos I've watched. Sometimes it is my own garden diagram. Take lots of cell photos and videos to explain it to myself. Taking records, you know, it's all about taking records in whichever way you find relevant. Now, I'm going to move my cup of coffee just over the side quickly. I've been saying all through this evening that I'm going to show you my final box that I use for storing seeds. Some of you will have seen this before. This is it. This is a box. I'll put this on the overhead camera. Um, let me just adjust the camera slightly to bring it a bit further in. There we go. So this, books, this box I got from The Works, which is on most high streets. I think it cost me £8. And it's just a simple wooden box. What I did, I, I took it home as well as on follow. I got a can of spray paint, which cost me a pound, and I sprayed it this green. Then I stuck down the, uh, the the labels on the top, and then I went over that with some Munch Podge just to seal it in and, and what have you. And it's it done well. It has done very well. Very happy with it. But ultimately, it's what goes on on the inside that is what we really want to find out about. So... Here are a lot of my seeds. And what I've done, I, I, I cut this bit of plywood here to make these uh, these stripes. And then I organised all these seeds in alphabetical order. So right at the very front here, asparagus, which pretty much is the, the first one I ever come to. And then down towards the back here, let's find what? Wokbok. Wokbok at the end there. Um I can't think of any that might end in X, Y, or Z, but you get the idea. It's all in alphabetical order. I was going to make little cardboard templates to or dividers, so I know like tomatoes and what have you. In fact, one I'm looking for that I want to sew in a minute is pack choice. So, uh, P, P, there we go, right at the front here. There we go, pack choice. Exactly, nice and easy to find. That was why I like keeping them organized. I wanted to find Pak Choi, and there they were right at the front. So again, this is the point I'm saying with this seed storage about being organized. This box for me has been a godsend. In fact, I've got to get more of them and do exactly the same. I've got far too many seeds that were to fit in there. So I get the idea. Uh, let's uh, have a look. Have I said... Um, Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Oracle says, I'm having a bad day, put in the room, and my new is blocked. I will give my mate Stuart Jackson a ring. Oracle, your number is not blocked. Your number is not blocked. I don't know what's going on with this phone. I've got a, I'll, I'm going to try and dig out another old phone next week and see what's happening. Um, but your number is not blocked. I assure you of that. Um, Molly Boot says, pros and cons of plug plants for me. Pros, probably cost a fraction per plant that is cost that, that it costs me to raise. Cons, cannot always get the variety of what I want to grow. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with that. It is pros and cons um, to either way. And, and also, let's not forget, if you buy a plug plant, most of the work is done for you. You've still got to grow that plant, but it's just most of that work is done. Uh, Money Boots says Steve Seaside Steve has a good weather station that the data can load to computer. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, I'm looking for that, and I will get one. Oh, cool. I wish I was as lucky as you. I'm old school. Store everything in my head in my fantasy allotment as my plot, mallard rules, what gets grown, etc., etc. Yeah, I know how you feel. I know how you feel. Uh, Digwell, uh, true with the plot plants, but for me, there are only stocking fillers. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. They're just a bit extra. Uh, 
somebody in the Facebook group is saying that's awesome, talking about my book. Unfortunately, the Facebook group, I may not see who you are. It's just Facebook rules on that. Um, not sure. So I don't see who you are. So apologies for that. But uh, thank you. Oracle says, did you pay the phone bill? Yeah, I paid the phone bill. I don't know what's going on. I've rang it myself I, uh, for my own phone and it didn't go through. But I do try and test it before we go live. Lee had the same trouble last week. And um, I've, got, I've got to figure it out. Uh, that looks amazing. I just wish I could keep my seeds that tidy. I started putting them in order, but they never stay tidy. It is a lot of work to keep it organized, I'll be honest. It's a case that seeds come in, they go straight in the box. Uh, Digwell says, put the phone number up and I'll try it. It's up on this screen, 07307 135 174, right above. You cannot miss it. Uh, I agree, Muddy Beats. All about variety, but why buy plug bikes when I fail? There we go. Somebody's called in. Hello, caller. What's your name and where you called him from? Oh, they hanged up. They hanged up. Whoever it was, they hanged up. It worked, though. It did ring. Uh, I'm guessing that might have been Digwell. I'm guessing that was Digwell. It, it worked. I don't know what's going on. don't know what's going on. Anyway, keep letting me know how you store your seeds. I'm going to put this to one side quickly. And... Some of you may remember, we're going to do this thing, or trying to do this thing each week where we're going to be sowing some seeds. And a couple of weeks ago, we sowed this spinach. Uh, let me get into the light a bit better. Um, this is the spinach. Now, it's a little bit, for me, a little bit too young to prick out, but I reckon by next week, we should be able to prick that out. That was two weeks ago on this very show that we sowed them. Now, tonight, what I want to do is sow those pack choice seeds that I dug out of that box that we were just talking about. So uh, this is what I'm going to do. Now, I've remembered to label, uh, bring a label in this week. Um, this pen... We've spoken about using pens on the allotment for labels before. This pen was sent to me by Digwell, who says it's a very good permanent ink marker to use. So hopefully we're going to find it out. Now, I always like to put what it is on the seed, on the label, before I sow it, and the date. 16th of a 10th, 2022. And then I always try, let's see if this, I always try and pot it in before I even sow the seeds. Now, these seeds have been sown before, so the packet is open. So it's going to be a good way just to use up all these seeds and get them get them used up so it frees up a bit more space. Um, so, yeah, pack joy being sown this week, as I said. Like I said, the spinach isn't quite there for pricking out just yet. I like to wait and see until we get true leaves, and then we'll be pricking those out probably next week i reckon so we go pak choy is now sewn as part of this live show in fact i'm going to make a note that they are on that label live show so that we can keep coming back to them each each week and see how they get on let's see uh I have this, Digwell says I have the screen crop to see Richard in full. I don't know why you want to see me in full, to be honest. But, um, yeah, just just, just the way, it, just just the way, I thought that's that to make it a bit easier for everyone. I could have it running across the bottom, I guess. But, yeah, I, I would have pricked that spinach out a perfect size for me. I thought about it. I just, I'm going to, there's, like, this, uh, it's a bit difficult to see. Let me bring it. Here. So this one I would say is probably about right, but then you go down here, and these ones are still a little bit too small to try and try and handle. And I'd like to see these small ones just a little bit bigger before I start pricking those out. Um, let's see, let's see. Uh, Oracle says Digwell must have the magic number. It's the same number as always. Uh, I don't know who it was then. Uh, Oh, give us the name of that marker. It is 
let's see. Super ink marker, permanent marker, uh, pigment ink, oil based. So it doesn't get washed off. Doesn't get washed off. Fine. Um, I'm sure Digwell can let you know where he got these from. These are made by Mitsubishi Pencil Co. and made in Vietnam, if that's of any use to you. Um, here we go. PNA125. PNA125 is what you're looking for. Uh, but Digwell says, not me. Not me calling. I tried, but no ringtone. It was a withheld number, so I don't know who did try calling. I will test the phone. I think it must be the phone. It's an old. Oh, God. What phone is this? iPhone. iPhone 4, I guess. Uh, no, uh, maybe not a 4. I can't remember what phone this is. Um, it's an old phone anyway. Uh, let's have a look. Let's have a look and see if it tells me. It's, it's a few years old, so it probably is coming to the end of its life. But I would have still, it still works. But I would have thought, I would have thought that phone calls would work. It is a phone after all. Uh, Digwell says Uniball for that that permanent marker. Um, I've got to say, I think it's he sent this to me probably about a year ago, and I've been testing it out, and I've got to say, I am quite impressed. The ink doesn't seem to get uh, washed off using this pen, which is always, for me, a good thing. doesn't seem to get bleached in the sun. And then, you know, the magic erasers, you can get them from a pound shop. I use that to wash, to wipe the uh, ink off when it comes to the end of the end of the season. I'd like to try and make the labels last for as long as possible. Again, it comes off quite, quite easily. Um Yeah, um, Oracle says, you keep this, you, Richard, you will be off the Xmas card list. I'm, I don't know what's going wrong. I'm sorry, buddy. I really don't know what's going on. I will try a different phone next week so you can call in. Um, and hopefully, I know, I've got missed call. Oh, no. No, that was me calling it when I tested it. I don't know what's going on with that phone. We've got to figure out this, this phone issue, haven't we? I've got this phone line set up, especially for it. But, of course, you can still zap in. If you want to appear on screen, then hit the link and zap yourself in. Um, Stuart Jackson says, I've started using that pen this year. So far, so good. Well, very good so far, sorry. Um, yeah, I quite like it. I, I've always used a pencil in the past because uh, pencils are cheap and easy. And again, it comes down to the fact that I can just rub the pencil off at the end of a season. Um, so, uh, can rub the pencil off and re reuse that label. Uh, Digwell says, just try it again, Richard, and gone to answer machine. It could be two people trying to call at the same time, I guess. Um, but I'm afraid to touch my actual phone to try it out. So, God knows. I'm going to plug it into a different phone next week and see if that makes any difference. Um, either that or I'll pop into the phone shop and find out if they've got any reasons. Digwell says, it's the best pen i found. It lasts for three to four years outdoors. That's, yeah, great. Um, I'm quite impressed. I will admit, I am impressed. Some permanent pens, permanent markers, really don't last very long, I've found. Uh, some can be absolutely... They're outside for a few months and they seem to get bleached. This one does seem to work quite well. Brian says it works, the number. I didn't hear it ring. I didn't hear it ring if you called. Um, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I I didn't hear it ring at all, so God knows. Um, I just got to be saying more with that phone. That phone. Oracle says I would know how to zap in. That is no problem. I I do get that. I will go back to old school. We can be pen pals. Always happy to hear from you, Oracle. Um, but I will try and fix the phone. I will. Priority for this week, fix that phone. Pen pals, talking of pens, of course. Talking of pens. 
Uh, turbo string, two bean tins and a tie and a bit of string. That could work, isn't it? We'll have to everybody would have to have a bit of a bit of a tin can in their shed when we go live and we'll have that conversation with a string running all over the country and uh, across the pond to America, of course. Um like, or Croatia as well. It'd be a long bit of string. Elon Musk is jamming the network, so we have to use a Starlink. Could be, could be happening. We don't know. Don't know. Um, it is an old phone. I'll be granted. It is an old phone, so I don't know. <laughs> oh, of course, I knew you would like that one, Richard. Indeed, I do like it. I do like it. Anyway, uh, let's get back to the talk and gardening. I will figure the phone out. And hopefully have a better luck with it next week. Back to the gardening. So um, seed storage. I think we've we've done that at quite some detail now. Tins seem to be the most popular option, and uh, keeping them in your closet or in your wardrobe at home to control the temperature. As I said, for me, keeping them in the fridge, these boxes that I have works really nicely. But being organised is the key thing, and it's very difficult to keep ourselves organised. Uh, Brian says, I was wrong. It just keeps ringing. This is what happened when I tried ringing it as well a couple of weeks ago. It's going to be the phone. I'm going to try it in a different phone. Um, it could, you would hear it. If it rang here at this end, you would hear it. It's on. I don't block anybody. I don't turn it on quiet or anything like that. You would hear it. I can guarantee you. Uh, right. I'm just going to, I can't remember what we said we were going to discuss. Um, Next week, uh, I've made it. I made some notes, and I've got G slash IT. I'm not quite sure what that means, so uh, I'll have to play back. But what I want to talk about next week is what are your goals for this growing season? I think this was one of Rebecca's uh, ideas. What are your growing goals? What are your goals for this growing season on your allotment, on your garden, anything like that? That's what I want to talk about next week goals and i've got quite a few that i want to achieve uh it's always good i feel at this time of year to take a bit of time to reflect on this last year see what's changed what we could have done better and think about next year and as we've been talking about seed storage it's probably a good reason to go through our seeds and work out what we want to grow next year this is something i can really sink my teeth in um so goals that i want to know about next next week um, oh, uh, Turbo Stream has just reminded me. Any photos I this week, Richard? I sent in. Yes, there are photos. I completely forgot about that. We do have we do have photos. So let's have a quick look at those. Uh, so, oh God, the fireworks are going off now. Just bring my notes over. Let's take a look at your photos. So first of all, this comes from Turbo Stream, and he's been growing chicory in a cold frame. Now, this chicory was part of the seed supporters pack from a couple of months ago, I believe, but it looks like it is growing very, very well, I've got to say. Now, this is the cold frame that he is using, and it's a recycled or upcycled cold frame. Looks quite impressive. Um, I, I quite like it. Uh, especially for starting off seeds at these colder times of year. Now, Phil Hardin has been collecting some leaf fall to turn it into leaf mold. This is something I'm talking about on the podcast tomorrow. I've gone down to my local park to get some leaves, and uh, I'm going to be doing various things with those. Added to that, uh, Stephen, who is watching tonight under Steve, he has harvested some pumpkins and butternut squash he normally doesn't have much luck with pumpkins but this year he is very very happy now digwell has uh he's been featured a lot tonight he has got these two chilies and he's called them the up yours chili and uh, i think you can see why um Who's this? Uh, Kate Hardin, uh, I'm, oh, Chili Kate, otherwise known as, or Chili Phil. They have been getting the autumn planting in the autumn allotment looking ready. And this is what they are doing. I love the use of this uh, black plastic they have to suppress weeds. It's definitely a good option and definitely a good way to suppress those weeds over those winter months to make your, your life a little bit easier come next season. 
Now, Jenny, um, Jenny Oldham, this was, she discovered that these potatoes were in a old potato bag that she had almost forgotten about and hadn't really looked after them. Uh, so she was pleasantly surprised when she turned it out and discovered all these potatoes. They look really good, I've got to say. Absolutely really good. I think looking at the label, they are Charlotte potatoes. I uh, bet they are very, very tasty. Uh, Jenny Hallett, who unfortunately has got an evening meal tonight with family, but she harvested all this lot this week as well. What a load of vegetables amongst all that. Absolutely jam-packed with plenty in there. Now, uh, Stuart Jackson, we have had quite a few questions about his pear tree at school. He's going to be coming on the live show at some point to do a QA. and a And these are the pears that he's harvested. They don't look too bad, actually. Um, pears are pretty tricky to grow and when know when to harvest at the right time. So looking looking good. As you can see, the key there is for size. And I think they're looking pretty good. Now, finally, Shipyard Gardener, he's been growing these carrots in pots. I wasn't sure at first if they were carrots or swede until I looked at the leaves. Um, I've got to say, growing in pots, there's a lot to be said for growing in pots with the luck that we can, well, not just the luck, but how lucky or how much we can grow in pots. And carrots are one, and these look incredibly well. So those are the photos for this week. Thank you so much to Turbo Stream for reminding me about that. Please do send in your photos. We try and go through them every week. You can post them in our Facebook group. You can send them to me via social media or email me, richard at the uk. Thank you so much to everyone that has sent their videos in. They are great. Now, Digwell says, not sure if anyone is a member of the Saturns Club. £10 a year membership, 10% per purchase discount plus four times £5 vouchers. Quid's in. I just saved £30 in one purchase. I hadn't, I, I'm not a member, but the fact that you get £20 worth of vouchers makes it a very worthwhile club to be in i might have to look into that um for a bit more sounds good uniball for thin lines and eden 750 for the thicker lines talking about these pens so eden 750 if you are looking for some thicker lines as i said i'm quite impressed with these pens so uh can only be a, a good thing uh, Muddy Boots and is is a Saturns and Dobby's member. Saturns and Dobby's part of the same company, aren't they? If I remember correctly, mind you, I think Thompson and Morgan are also same company nowadays too. Uh, Stuart Jackson says, "I've now moved my veggie pod and planted spring onions, lettuce, plus herbs for over the winter." Absolutely, veggie pod. I've said this before. The veggie pod is such a growing, great growing system, especially over winter with that that fleece blanket. I've got the greenhouse cover for my small veggie pod. Fantastic, fantastic growing system, and uh, I've got to got to start and get get out there and grow more in it. Uh, Oracle says, I must say, Digwell has definitely set the standard for the get to know me videos. Brilliant, Digwell. I wouldn't have minded to be in a sub with you. The cooking would be good, mate. Yeah, uh, he really has set the bar very high there, Digwell. It's absolutely fantastic. Uh, nice photos, everyone, and nice crops too. Indeed, it's so good to see so many vegetables still coming in and people harvesting all their vegetables. These autumn time, this autumn time of year, it tends to go a little bit, a little bit bland. I think with with plants dying back and the amount of vegetables that are really being harvested tending to move over to either squashes or the brassicas so to still be getting tomatoes and cucumbers i think it's pretty damn good i harvested some apples today as well from our our tree or the allotment anybody who's seen the video who knows the tree when i planted it it was like that and now it's gone over like that it's uh to still be getting apples off it is a fantastic thing um, I've also I bet was planting out my onions today down on the allotment, funnily enough. And I I tried a bit of a story here. I tried making myself a a dibber in the sense that this was a, a, a piece of wood 
that fits inside the bed, the length of a bed. We've had 10 centimetre infall, infalls, um, little dibbers. And I just take that whole piece of wood down, dib it all down, and there we go. We've got 14 um, holes dibbed ready for onions. That was the idea, and it worked okay, except that I only glued the dowling onto the wood. It wasn't the most securest thing. Even though it was a strong strong glue it just wasn't secure enough and i accidentally moved a bit of wood before pulling it out and some of those barrelings fall fell off so next week i'm planting out my garlic and i'm going to spend this week refining this glorified dibber if you like that'll be coming up in this video uh that i'll be potting out later on this week as well uh turbo stream says nice photos everyone and nice crops too <coughs> excuse me uh, Idaho says, well, all the photos are wonderful. There's a good lot of photos this week, I've got to say. Um, please do go check out our Facebook group if you do want to see more of these photos and more of the uh, the conversation that people are having on, going on in there as well. As I said, I try and stay out of it. I don't want to answer people's questions before letting others answer. But please do go join in that conversation as well. And feel free as well to, if you have a YouTube channel or anything like that, Feel free to pop that in the uh, the YouTube chat, in the Facebook group as well. I don't mind that. Digwell says to Oracle, I was an engineer in those days, but the only things I cooked were jacket spuds with butter in foil on this steam turbine throttle box during the middle watch. Don't blame you at all. Muddy Rick says, Suttons and Dobbies are the same. I meant Dobbies garden centres. £10 per year, 10% off all gardening items, plus seeds, etc., plus two hot drinks each month from their calf um oh yes of course i've got got you yes dobby's it gets confusing doesn't it all these garden centers with very similar names um we don't have a dobby's garden center near us uh or do we actually the nearest one is brighton so i wouldn't call that near anymore uh, Stuart Jackson says, I will try to do a get to know you video this week. I could possibly do a bit of school and the rest of home. That would be fantastic. However you want to do it, it will be fantastic. It's just to try and get this community of gardeners knowing each other a bit more about who it is behind the name, as I describe it. Um, again, Digwell has set the bar very high with his video, I know. Um, and it's fantastic, but hopefully that will inspire more. Uh, Hargrave Gas says, I joined the Thompson & Morgan Club for the same reason, 90% off and money off vouchers. Yeah, I didn't, all these garden centres now are doing all, all of these online garden retailers. They're doing all these clubs and everything. It seems to be the popular thing. But I do think, I will say, if you are shopping and with one particular company and they're doing money off vouchers and you actually get, you could be saving more than what your membership costs. Then I think it is worthwhile. Uh, core belief, especially at the moment when people are struggling with finances, it is a, a lot to be said for trying to save money where we can. Uh, Oracle says, what about the live Q and a with Stuart Jackson? That, I'm gonna. I've got. I've got to message to it and set a date. But we are going to be doing that. Don't worry. And I'm going to open that up. Anybody else wants to do a live Q and A? It is open for everybody else. Um, I joined Thompson and Morgan for the same reason. Ten percent off and some five pound vouchers. Oh yeah, I've done that one. Stuart Jackson. Yeah, another great live show this week. It's been interesting hearing other people's storage ideas. Indeed, I do like to find out what everybody else does and everybody's storage ideas. Um, we could go on to talk about storage of tools at some point as well, actually. Uh, I mean, everybody can see mine behind me. I use these pegboards. But that's definitely something we think about in the future. Uh, good ideas indeed. If, if the appetite is there. Um, Always looking for ideas for subjects that we can talk about, as, as you know. Next week, I want to know your garden goals for 2023. Um, seems a little bit early, but I don't mind that. Don't mind that. Um, the week after will be Halloween, so not sure what we're going to do just yet for Halloween, but um, we'll find something out. And 
I've got to go for back and watch last week's live stream to find out what those suggestions were for last week's video. Right, guys, I think it is time to call this. Um, uh, up to the end of this week's live show. Uh, it's been a good conversation. I'm always happy to chat. Um, love love hearing your ways of storing your seeds. And as I said, when we've done this before, um, I did go out and buy this. So I do take note of what you say if you come up with some good suggestions. By the way, I put everything back in when I while well, well, Digwell's playing while well, I was playing Digwell's video. Uh, but yeah. Let's crack this up. So Oracle says, I volunteered, but it was be slow on the message. Uh, not sure what I was. What, yeah. Uh, Digwell says, take care, guys. Got to rush. My pot noodle is getting cold. I've, <laughs> yeah. Go have your pot noodle. Jen's Guard Adventures. Thank you for another cracking live. No problem. Kate John Rambo McDonald, Katie John Rambo McDonald. Sorry, uh, I recycle the seed envelopes you send out once I've planted all the seeds. Fantastic, yes, absolutely great idea. The, the seeds, uh, envelopes I meant to bring in some envelopes actually. Oh, here we go. Good, well, I can't get to them, but yeah, the envelopes I try and recycle those as well. Funny enough, um, good to see other people doing it too. Thank you very much, Katie. Uh, Turbo Stream, have a great weekend, everyone. Indeed. Chili Phil, good night from Chili Phil and Chili Kate. Looking forward to hearing your tips on leaves now. I got my mould on the go, indeed. Hi, oh, Grave Gas, Any, another great week. Speak again in seven days. Have a good week, indeed. Um, Idaho says, bye, Digwell. Great intro video, indeed. Right, guys, I'm going to wrap this up. You take care, guys. I'll see you again next Sunday at 6 where we go live again. So until then, please take care.